gas training, how to test a thermocouple. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm back at Viva Training Academy in Halifax and I've got Roy who, who is a, an ex Baxi trainer, super duper trainer, he's trained me, I've been on many of his training courses over the years, over the last 20 years or so, uh, he's a super trainer and he's going to go through how to test a thermocouple on a boiler. So back to basics really and just to try and help you understand boilers from the start, boilers, cookers, uh, anything really that has a thermocouple. So I'll pass you over to Roy, and as I say, Roy's gonna show us how to test a thermocouple. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Hi guys. It's Roy Fugel here at the Viva Train Academy over in Halifax and today what we're going to have a look at is how you would test a thermocouple. There's a couple of ways that you can test thermocouples. Thermocouples used to be the main flame failure device on boilers a good few years ago but since pilot lights on boilers disappeared there are other flame failure devices but now we, found, we find thermocouples on hobs, on cookers, on gas fires. So we've got to look at what a thermocouple is. It's actually um, a thermoelectric flame failure device. So how does it work? Well, if we have a look at this grey push button gas valve, when we push the grey button in, what we're actually doing is we're opening a valve seat. So in effect, what we're doing is we're pushing that valve up against its seat. So we're opening the valve up. Once we've opened it up, click on the ignition so it lights the pilot and when the pilot lights it warms the end of the thermocouple. How that thermocouple produces the current or the, sorry the voltage to power that thermoelectric device is easy. It's basically two dissimilar metals. At the tip you've got a fine wire usually made out of platinum or titanium and then you've got the copper sleeve in. So as that's warmed up it creates a small electrical voltage. That voltage is sufficient to power the magnet. It's an electromagnet, so when we put power to it, it becomes a magnet. So when we push the button in, and that is closed up, when we release after holding the button in maybe 25, 30 seconds, providing the thermocouple's good and the pilot's good, that will hold open. So then when the solenoid is energized because we've got a demand for the boiler and the thermostat's asking for the gas to come on, the solenoid opens up and allows gas through to the burners and then we'll cross light off the pilot. So that's basically how a thermocouple works. So let's now have a look at the couple of ways we can test them. One is by using a little test rig. Now this valve I've actually removed from an old gas valve so if you're taking an old gas valve out for, because maybe the solenoid has failed, you can sometimes take the thermoelectric part out. This one actually came out of an old main water heater. I've had it in my tool case for a good few years. The other way of testing it, if you haven't got one of those, is using a multimeter. So we're going to go through both ways of testing. Right, so the first way is using my little test rig. So I've got a thermocouple here I want to test. So what I need to do is to tighten that thermocouple into the thread on my test rig. Problem is, that thread on that nut is too small so it won't screw in. So what I've got is basically a slice nut. So it's got a groove out the nut which will fit over the lead on the thermocouple. And it's the same size as my test rig or the same thread. So I'm just going to thread that on. It only needs to be hand tight. Then I've got my little lighter, my little uh, hob lighter. I'm just pushing that in with my thumb. I'm lighting that and I'm just putting the flame under there for about 10, 15 seconds. So when I release, it's holding. Now if I let the flame off, turn the flame off, it's still holding. It should hold for about 15 to 20 seconds. Once it's de-energised, the spring core becomes that and then that will pop out. Not for longer than I thought it would do. 
Right, so that's using a little test rig, but obviously not everybody's got one of these little test rigs. So the other way to do it is using a multimeter. So before I connect my multimeter up, first thing I've got to do is to turn my multimeter on to millivolts, because that's all it is. It's a very small amount. Now we'll be DC millivolts, so in this particular case, this flute multimeter, I need to push the little yellow button to engage DC millivolts. Um, so I'll then I can just set that to one side, just so it's ready. And then I need to connect up the probes. Now, they're on crocodile clips. So the red crocodile clip, we connect onto the copper sheath. The black crocodile clip at the back of the thermocouple where it will go into the valve there's a little silver bobble that's the where the two wires which is one's the little titanium or platinum wire inside that's where that comes through so we connect that one onto that in there once we've got it biting on there we can then warm up the end of the probe and we can see the figures going up Once we take the flame off, we'll see the figures going down. So it's just checking the millivoltage on there. So if the thermocouple was attached to a boiler, we generally hold that grey button or whatever colour the button is in for about 30 seconds. So if I put the flame on there for 30 seconds, this particular thermocouple will go to about 20 millivolts. But it's always best just checking with the manufacturers of the particular appliance you're working on some of them work on a little bit lower, some work on a little bit higher, but this one's about 20 odd millivolts. As a rule of thumb, if you see the figures going up nicely after you've held the flame on for about 10 to 15 seconds and they're still rising, it's generally a sign that it's doing well. You could hold it on for 30 seconds and just see what it achieves. But that's just a quick way of testing, a couple of quick ways of testing thermocouples. Right, so that's it for today. So I'd just like to finish off by thanking Alan for uh, doing all the video and making me look good. Um, it actually does take a little bit longer than it shows to uh, make these videos. Um, I'd like to thank Beaver for letting me do this. Um, if you've got any comments, please put them down below. Any questions, please ask. We're here to help you. So from me, Roy Fugler at the Beaver Training Academy. Until next time, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you very much for that, Roy. And, and thank you again to Viva Training Academy for all the help and support that, you, that you're giving the new, new trainees and people that's been doing the job a long time as well, just to try and to help them understand components and things a little bit better. Uh, if you can, please put a comment below, um, like, share, all that good stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching.